Welcome back to Dukes Nukes uh, for episode 43. It's Mario week. Do 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 Mario. Oh no, there's a dragon. Ah! All right, we watched <laughs> Super Mario Bros. The movie in the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Uh, it is Mario podcast. Uh, welcome back for movie, TV, and pop culture discussions. I'm here with Blaine. He's known for having a dog and doing trivia facts, a question dance, and Will, who is the editor, Marvel movie fanboy, and a movie salad. Will, Marvel movie fanboy. I'm none of those things. Uh, you're not even a salad. No. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, so let's just jump right into the first movie that... Well, actually, do you want to do Dungeon Dragon first or Mario? Uh, Mario. Okay, well, we'll do Mario. Will loved it. We are jumping into Super Mario Bros. movie. So the Super Mario... The Mario Brothers. They're in Brooklyn. I wore my Mario shirt. Oh. So I could show you how much a fan I was and how, how much Mario. I was disappointed. Do you got the summary of the movie? <laughs> yeah, I was reading it. The Mario okay. Brothers in Brooklyn are failing at being plumbers. They go down a magical tube into the Mushroom Kingdom, where they team up with Peach and Donkey Kong to defeat Bowser, who is trying to take over the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, first reactions, uh, description, I don't know. It wasn't bland. great. Bland. Extremely bland. It was a kid's movie. It, okay, but that's not an excuse. You can't just say it's a kid's movie and that's why it's not amazing. Okay, you know, the Lego movie, I heard Mark Kermode say it's the Citizen Kane of how to do like a child's movie like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is not the Lego movie. It had the same issues that Hot Take, like Game of Thrones Season 8 had, where a lot, a lot of it I thought I really liked it, but then the writing is what just drags everything down. What writing? Well... Okay. <laughs> the the characters are so paper thin. The plot is paper thin. See, I'm not, I'm not a huge Mario. I I haven't really played any Mario games until the Switch. So, is there really Well, there's not that any, much. In is depth. there is there is it paper I thought it was paper thin to begin with, so they just kind of took what they had and didn't do any work. Let me ask you, Blaine. What's the plot of Lego? Right. No, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. So, my opinion basically boils down to the fact that if you're going to make a movie, you need to have an idea for the movie, not just let's adapt this, figure out how to do that. Right. They, it's 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 from the get go. It was incepted with ill intent. Yeah, it was literally just putting the video game on screen and not doing anything with it. And there's a few video game sequences and they're fine, but I don't think they mix well. That Mario geometry with the platforms and stuff looks weird and fake in a movie. Like, it's weird. That scene where P Princess Peach is doing the more Mario 64 course, yeah. where she's, like, training Mario, and she's like, look how good I can do. Look how good I can do it. Why? Okay. I'm sorry. I have so many things to say. <laughs> Why? No, keep first going. of all, first of all, Princess Peach goes, here's an obstacle course, Mario. I'm going to test you. If you can complete this, I'll help you. But watch me do it first, because look how good I am. Why? Why does she do it? Why does she even have to do it? And... She's bouncing all over the like I don't even know where the start and stop of this course is because she's just going all over the place. No, it's it. It was weird how they did it because it was like it wasn't just a straight line or anything. It was like all over the place, like zigzag up and down. That's what I'm like saying. So like complete weird. the course every. So there's a couple of 2D shots where we see like Mario, you know, jumping on things. That's fine, I guess. But this one was like a cube of obstacles. So there's no definitive start and end. And they sure as hell don't establish any. And I don't, I just don't know why she even had to do it. Yeah, you can tell because it's an Illumination movie. You can definitely feel the Illumination sprinkles in there. That was when I heard they were doing a Mario movie. I was like, okay. And then they said Illumination was the studio. And I immediately like internally panicked because I was like, okay, it's going to be just generic bottom of the barrel stuff. And it is. I thought a lot of the colors and everything, there were some good scenes that were just beautiful. The colors had no thematic use, though. It was just like, look at all this stuff. True, but I like stuff. I do like stuff, Blaine. That was a good answer. <laughs> it's it's fun in a video game, but a video game is a different medium. But uh, It just money. didn't work for me. And it, while fair. I was watching it, I kept just thinking, I was like, do I hate this? I think I hate this. Like, I was so bored and turned off while in the theater which does not happen to me very often. So that that's how I know that this was just, this was not anything. See, I was sitting there and it was definitely that paper thin, like it's missing something. But, but I was vibing. But I vibed and I, I had a good, like I I was fine. I had a good time. I'm not disappointed in seeing it. Like, I, I got it, what I expected. Like, is it the best thing ever? No. Would I go rewatch the whole thing? Probably not. Would I be happy if I saw some clips online? Yeah. yeah. No, nah, I, it was, it was just, eh. Can we talk about the, trash 80s soundtrack Ooh, 
it's they horrendous. just kept throwing it in for it's no horrendous. reason. It's horrendous. I, I thought it was all right the first time they did it, it and then they didn't stop. It was it was overdone, I think, because yeah. if it happened once or twice, I thought it would have been okay. Every song is like generic is just generic movie song. Like I need a hero Shrek 2 used that much better. It doesn't use the songs. It just puts them in because people know these songs. Well, well, they it's, you had to use the holding out for hero song because our hero was doing a thing. He was training. That's like standard. Yeah, it was bad. Did you expect And also to- the mix was off. There was like no bass on the 80s songs. I don't know if that was our theater, but it was just like all high end and it I, sounded like crap. I was going to say that was probably the theater. They just put like a clip of the song and then I I feel like nothing was happening in the movie. So I was to get your brain to go. This is I know this. This is this must be good. But my brain literally went like, why? (laughs) (laughs) That was my brain. I don't know. It didn't do it for me. Yeah. Every time one of those songs starts, I was like, I was like, huh, really going this way. Okay. But then I was like, I I, well, my thought it was just vibing. So I was just like, whatever. I was okay with it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have any. I I like that song. I'm going to close my eyes so I can just enjoy the song. <laughs> you close your eyes and enjoy a crappy, I, I, very crappy sounding song. Yeah. And, and my, not all the stuff on the screen, Blaine. You know, I, would, the I, would, stuff. I would also argue, I would say, True. like, I was fine with it, but I would say for the target audience of this movie, which is very small children, yeah, it that did what the it music needed. makes even less sense. Oh, yeah. If the target audience right. is this children, why are there so many references to the NES era of Mario then? Right. Because it's for the parents who come to see it as a family then movie. Why is it, then why is it for children? Because it's a movie for children that the family comes. Then why are the references from the 80s? So the parents may understand something. They didn't know what they wanted this movie to be. They didn't know how to make this movie. They it's a shoved mess. It's as, a mess. They shoved as much crap as they could into it. And I and think... with no direction. And I think that's more of the idea of we don't know if this would be a franchise or just the one movie from Nintendo because Nintendo is very secure about their properties. That I, I honestly would be open to seeing... A different franchise because I do think Mario is probably like a, I think a Zelda movie or a Metroid movie would work better because well Metroid's just based off Alien so you just have an animated version of Alien for kids oh yeah so maybe not uh, Link doesn't talk so no matter who they get to voice cast him people are going to be pissed if he doesn't talk people are going to be pissed you would have so to maybe make, don't you would do have that to make him talk you would have to if make they him made talk. a movie they would make him talk yeah it's fine it'll make money it'll make a lot of money. Well, do we want to talk about some of the care? I did you like any of the castings? Well, so we had Chris Pratt, our favorite Chris Pratt. He plays Mario. Whatever his voice. He's whatever. I, was it just me, or was his voice like changing throughout the movie? Yes, he couldn't hold the same accent. He couldn't hold the same thing. Yeah, which it was. It it, it didn't, didn't bother not, me. It I didn't, bothered me. But I definitely would rather have that than some high pitched Italian man for an hour and a half just like screaming in my ear. Mm. That's. If you have minimal dialogue, it could work. I that the whole scene too at the beginning. So they they create the commercial. They got a call, um, and they go and they fix the bathroom. I I don't know. They were just trying to get laughs and like why, why are we here? I was hoping that their first job was going to be where they find the pipe, so that we could just get out of Brooklyn. Because I don't want to see Brooklyn. I just want to see the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and then we got there, and I was disappointed too. Well, that's because like we said, there was there's no there's no plot. No, so like they, <laughs> no, there isn't. But. So they, you have to drag out the Brooklyn stuff to get your hour thirty. <laughs> they just go into some basement. They go, they go into the sewer and they just find a warp pipe laying there. And okay, what the hell are the physics with warp pipes? Now you can just stand near one and eventually it'll suck you it in. Sucks you in, bro. That's not how that works in the game. Mm. You press down and then you you choose when to go through a warp pipe. They never just suck you. Mm. Maybe maybe Mario was going, suck me. <laughs> and it did it. Anya Taylor-Joy, the Queen's Gambit's Princess Peach. Ah, I love her, but she phoned it in. She had yeah. a lot to do, but also nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's yeah. fine. Every Everything <laughs> she did was just, I am the princess, I am in charge. And it was just, but like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all the toads are like, Oh yeah, Princess Peach. Yeah, she's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, using my princess authority, I will do a thing. And they're like, yes, <laughs> that's uh, she. Okay, so she shows up to the Toads as a baby, and then they raise her for whatever reason. And then they go, you know, who'd be a good ruler of our entire kingdom. This the baby, the baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was surprised of how much she did while like not doing anything. 
which is kind of sad. I just but thought her voice acting was was fun. It was just it whatever. Was, yeah, animation has always been different. Which That's is another I, which is another I, complaint of mine. Hire actual voice actors. Right. I don't know why stop they stop hiring actors to do voice work. I That's understand. not what they do. If you can double, you can be both. But Chris Pratt is not both. And 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 I get getting one face to just make money, but they did they got it's like everybody. seven or Set, eight. Uh, yeah. Every single actor. Nine. Actually, I, I I would say Jack Black um is well, a good not is a good animated. Line. Sorry. He's sorry. okay. Continue. We'll do Luigi, Charlie Day. That's fine. Yeah, I thought he, he was, was pretty good. Fine. Yeah. He was underutilized. Charlie Day is another like I love Charlie Day, but I wouldn't have put pegged weird. him as Luigi. Again, not a voice actor. Yeah, he just kind of sounds like him. He's just like doing... his regular voice just sounds like him. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was odd because they had because a good chunk of the movie, which it's in the trailer, so I guess not really spoiled. Luigi gets captured. That just seemed like an odd thing to do. Well, because the games you capture Princess Peach, and that's not okay. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just wanted to switch it up, which and, is fine. and broke him up. But the thing was, is I was kind of enjoying Mario and Luigi's chemistry. Yeah, no, I thought that was the only thing that they had. And then I was like, after that point, that's where I turned to be insanely bored, is after they get split up. Because then you're just cutting back, and Luigi's just in a cage, doing literally nothing. And the little star's like... With the most annoying character in the movie. The star? Yes. (laughs) That star is... That trope of just like... A happy... it's, It's like trying to be edgy, but it's not saying anything edgy. It's saying the most generic, just... The world is pointless. Ooh, let's all be depressed. Yeah. But in yeah. a kid's voice. Ha ha ha. So funny. So original. <laughs> there. <laughs> Next is Jack Black, who is, I thought was really good. Nah, I mean, he's <laughs> just Jack Black with a slightly pitch shifted voice. Yeah, he's just <laughs> Jack <laughs> Black. We just got a Jack Black in a movie. But it's, I'm fine with, I, I do love Jack Black. And honestly, he is it's the best Jack part Black. Of the what were you expecting? Right. He gets his own little Jack Black um, he song. Sings, he sings like three times. He, yes, it's great. he sings and he just sings like he would in his band Tenacious D. That's yeah. fine. Whatever. Yeah. That's fine. I don't know. The one thing, though, I, I feel like they made him evil and badass at the beginning. And then we found out he wanted to marry um, Princess Peach. And then after that, it was just lovey-dovey the whole time. And we never got that badass no, feeling we're going back. I agree. We're they going totally back stripped to, out his... This is a kid's movie. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying I support it, but I'm saying that's what it is. Yeah, but they they, they remember had the, the badass at the beginning. Remember the devil they in Puss in Boots? Yeah, that's an intimidating villain. And that was and legitimately awesome. scary in a yeah. kid's movie. I agree with you. And he kept it the whole time. Yeah. That's the best thing this movie did. It's made me appreciate Puss in Boots a little more. Puss in Boots is amazing. No, Jack Black was great though. I loved it. I that liked, was fun. I liked when he love is a strong word. <laughs> I uh, no, I well, he was probably my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, but I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna be like, ooh, I'm, I want, I'm in the mood for a Jack Black movie, Super Mario. Yeah, Brothers. no, oh, well, he's, but... he's the, yeah, well, he's not like the main character. He's just, I thought he was the best part of the movie. Like every time Bowser was on screen, it's like, oh, this is gonna be a good part. Those, yeah, those are the fair. clips I'll be watching uh, as Bowser singing. Yeah, <laughs> when I go back. Mm-hmm. The, well, the, I know, I, I know, I harped on the '80s soundtrack, but I just want to slip in that the. Um, the score is pretty good. The remix orchestral tracks. I love the score. That's that might have been banging. my favorite part. Who's the next character? Uh, I was going to do Charles Marionette. Is that his name? Oh, tr- uh, the the actual voice of Mario. He plays Mario's dad. Yes. Which I thought was kind of cool. He doesn't do anything, but yeah. I just thought that was a cool little thing. Now, that's a different character than the guy in Brooklyn who's like kind of dressed like Mario, right? Yeah, I was confused. Who the heck is that guy? I don't no, know. No, he was another... The dude that did that did the voice, like yippee, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I'm, that's Charles, not Charles Martinet did that <laughs> one too. I don't know. It's Yahoo. Yahoo. <laughs> yippee. <laughs> yippee. <laughs> okay. Anyways, yippee. he he was another voice actor, um, from the Mario. Is there only one? Right. Charles Martinet does Mario, Luigi, Waluigi, Wario. I'm pretty sure it was him. Wow. Okay. He pro- I wouldn't put it past him that they had him, you know, he probably did multiple both. He did both. I, I'm I think pretty it, sure that was what him. What was that character? That So you've got Mario who looks like Mario does, but then you've got another just regular person in Brooklyn who's wearing slightly more normal <laughs> overalls yeah. and a slightly more normal red hat and red <laughs> shirt. But, <laughs> but it goes just back. Get it. It, it just goes back to they're just cramming crap. Yep. They, they are just cramming everything. 
Keegan Michael Key plays Toad. He was yeah. there. Dude, his voice is so pitch shifted, you could get anybody. I his character also kind of just like disappears. Cause like Peach, yeah, yeah, he does. Because Peach does like random nothingness, but like it's still Peach and she's there, and then just like around her shoulders, just hey, look, there's there's Toad. He's there's there. Toad. Well, at the beginning when they first met Mario and Toad, they were trying to make it like a friendship, but like nothing was built. I think like, too, it he, was there was nothing. That's, there. He meets Peach and and she makes Mario do the course, uh, and then little Toad is there, and he's just like, I'm coming with you, and she's like. Okay, you don't okay. have to, you don't have to do the course. You're fine. She says, "Any toad brave enough to come with me can uh, come with me." But you, little Italian man, no. Yeah, but you little Italian man has to prove us. his worth. I Which still... he didn't. He wasn't able to complete it. Mar- he Mar- was just he, he got goes. he got a participation trophy. Mario, <laughs> I think I think Mario because he was talking throughout the whole movie, so it made sense why you wouldn't want to do like the Mario voice. You could make that argument, but Toad was in it for so not a lot of the movie. Hello. So, well, yeah, they could have, they could have, they could have done that. I think they could have done that. He had they, like, I, I, will, I would have loved it if he gets to the Mario Kingdom and Toad is just Hello, Mario. <laughs> Seth Rogen was Donkey Kong. He he did the Seth Rogen laugh. He did it twice. Not only did he do it, they spotlighted it. Oh yeah, yeah. they made it a point to be. This is to say, Seth and Rogen here is Seth Rogen doing his laugh as Donkey Kong the, it, on a silver platter. It literally zoomed and in. And then here it is face. again. <laughs> yeah. that, because they want to make the audience like that Leonardo DiCaprio meme where it's just every second you get the audience going, that thing, that other thing. I know that thing. <laughs> yeah, there was also Cranky Kong, Diddy Kong, Yoshi, and a bunch of other random just characters just scattered. Dude, that credit scene where it's like, Yoshi egg is hatching. We saw a field of Yoshis run by. Yeah, but... Who this, cares? But this is our Yoshi. But this is the... Dude, there's been different Yoshis. Yoshi. No, this is our but Yoshi. But this is the... But you, know, you know who doesn't know that well? The children. Those are all the characters I would think of. I mean, there was like Cranky Kong or whatever, but... uh, Yeah, his voice should have been more old manly. Christopher Lloyd would have been a good choice. That's That's exactly what I was thinking. You can't even throw a bone... To a struggling voice actor. They could have just done an AI, though. That probably would have been a better Donkey Kong. Blaine, stop. Just saying. Stop. You are gonna. You are single-handedly going to ruin the film industry. <laughs> One day, they're going to come Mr. out with a Mr. movie. Mr. I'm not excited for this movie, but I'm going to go see it anyway. <laughs> One day, they're going to have the end credits, and it's going to be one guy pushing a button. <laughs> What? And the whole movie was created by AI. I get what he's he's saying. A guy pushed a button and it just made a whole movie. Yeah, oh, cool. And nothing was done besides pushing a button. That's um, what I'm creativity. saying. Creativity. That's everything I had to say for Mario. Last thing I'll say is it it felt more like an adaptation of the new Super Mario Brothers games, which are notoriously the most sterile, bland Mario games in existence, because they're just fine. Now Will, they're so uninteresting. Do you know why? Because those are the ones the children have been playing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It always comes back to the children. Okay. Um, I, I just got some facts on the games and stuff. So the first game that Mario appeared in was 1981, the Donkey Kong. Yeah. So that was the first time we saw him. He got his first game, I think, in 1983 on the Game Watch. And then his first, the first Mario Super Mario Bros. game was um, 1985. Arguably, there's 21 Super Mario Bro games. 21. But people argue, because really some people just say there's only three, the original three. No, wait, what, what was it? No, it was the first one, and then they say the Super Mario 3, and then Super Mario World. Okay. Those three. Some people don't include the 3D ones. Some people don't include uh, whatever. But there's about 21, and then over 200 Mario games, if you're to include Mario being in any game. And then my other facts are just like all these, like all these freaking Easter eggs, Easter eggs, Easter eggs. So Kate Mario in the end of the the commercial, uh, and then the GameCube uh, startup music uh, when Luigi gets a phone call, they throw that in there for fun. That's his ringtone, <laughs> and it just goes on and 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 on. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. It's the next movie that we're going to talk about, where the leading actor is named Chris. A group of misfits go on an adventure to go to get a magical relic through a giant world of Dungeons and Dragons, but maybe there is something a little bit more out there, and maybe being a thief is not as important as everything else in your life. 
my expectations for the Mario movie and Dungeons and Dragons uh, were completely flipped. I was cautiously optimistic about Mario um, and basically expecting the worst from Dungeons and Dragons. It, it was a lot of fun. They they threw a lot of Easter eggs, but they were like not just shoving it in your face. The, like the Mario. difference was it respected, um, it respected the, the world. Fans. Yeah, yeah. So there were a lot of nods to the to the hardcore hardcore D and D audience with you know detailed rules and um, just little stuff that they don't point out. No, but happened to be there. Like the mage right. with his little thing that he needs to ca- cast his wild magic. Right. Oh, yeah. They don't yeah. say, I need this because I'm a this wild one, I don't know a lot about D&D, and I never felt like they were pulling me out of it for something I didn't understand. No, and there were really cool moments where you could almost see, like, oh, I can see the players saying, wait, can I try this? Or the DM going, and now this. You know, you could almost see the session being played out. It, yeah, it, it was really cool. It was fun. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was so fun. the people on the team, we had Chris Pine. He was a wiz- witty, musical, smart man. I thought he was pretty good. He he, he was good. Was he never, wasn't my favorite character in it, but he, he, he was, was good. He like he wasn't like the he was always just like bright enough. He was never the brightest in the room, or he was never like the darkest room. He was just always just you know he he was always just he was just consistent throughout the whole movie. Yeah, like, he was never yeah. dumb. He but he, he was works never super as smart. The, yeah, he he works as the leader who has to project who has to project a false confidence, but actually has no confidence. He's like Star-Lord. Very similar. Yeah. Very similar character to Star-Lord. And then we had, I don't know her name, but it's uh, Mrs. Toretto from the Fast and Furious movie. She plays... Uh, Michelle Rodriguez. She She's plays, part of the family. She plays Lady Drax of the Destroyer or something. And she likes <laughs> small men like Bradley Cooper. <laughs> she, she likes halflings. <laughs> Halflings, so you know, like hobbits, basically. And Bradley Cooper comes in as a cameo of a halfling, I love and he's how, a tiny guy sitting in a regular chair. I love how they did the the halflings. They literally just took like a camera and just like zoomed out. That's, I was like, "Ooh, are they going to do in. force perspective like Lord of the Rings?" No, no. <laughs> it's let's put him on a green screen and just take the diagonals and just go. <laughs> that makes it even better, though. It, it was funny. Way more practical stuff than I expected. Yeah. When they, they, there's a scene in a graveyard and a bunch of the corpses are all practical. That's probably the best. I don't best. know if they're costumes or puppets. Maybe a mix. That's probably the best gag in the movie. Where they just I enjoy to, that like, gag. go around the graveyard and just talking to people. I yeah, thought, talking to corpses. And they have to just keep going from corpse to corpse to figure out what happened during this yeah, battle. That, that, was, that was great. Yeah. Then there was also the wizard boy who gets the helmet. I thought he was pretty fine. I thought he was fine. I didn't think I was going to like him based off the uh, trailers, but... I, yeah, his whole good. his whole lack of confidence kind of wears on you. it. Well, then it he gets started confidence. to right, but right at the moment where he's like starting to actually like try to be a better person, it it it, it was almost right. perfectly timed where I was like, okay, this could be too much, and then he starts yeah finally. the upwards arc. You were starting to get annoyed. I I was the same way. Like, dude, see, but just even get your freaking confidence. But, even, but they <laughs> did it right at the right time. See, but even without his confidence, I thought it was pretty good because he did like. Because he was, he was not an idiot. Like, he's like, why? No, he's not dumb. Because whenever no. they have, like, a magic thing, he's like, oh, this is a magic thing, and I know this because I know magic. Like, I won't do this because I hate myself, but that is a magic thing. They're like, oh, well, thank you for that information, magic. Yeah, yeah. he's like, okay, yeah, we could use this, but I've got to, like, do some special magic stuff with it, and I'm just not good enough. So, and you guys putting all your faith in me makes me very uncomfortable. But that character perfectly played off of Chris Pine, because Chris Pine internally had the same lack of confidence, but was able to project the false confidence to then give the sorcerer guy his confidence. Then there was the shapeshifter girl who plays Beatrice in the It movies, and she turns into random crap. She was okay. She was there. I thought all the locations were pretty fun. They went down to that lava thing. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, and the fat dragon. The fat dragon and you was missed, awesome. And you missed two of the best fun. jokes of the movie because you went to the bathroom. I did. The bridge and what was the other? The brain dogs. The brain, the dogs. brain dogs. Jonathan, the big bird. They, they, oh, threw, yeah. they threw him out the window. Oh, yeah, Jonathan. And then they tried to throw him out at the end of the window at the end. <laughs> I was, I was not expecting that at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Where they just kept wanting Jonathan. There's little weird absurdist things that I love. Because it's not, unlike the Mario movie, it's not trying to masquerade as something it's not. It's just, it's kind of like, look at us. We're having some fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's one of the benefits that it gets, though, is because, like, D&D has so much lore to pick from, while, like, Mario, the Mario games don't have that much lore. They Dude, they've yeah. got so many characters. There oh, were so yeah. many characters that I was missing that weren't in the movie. Yeah, but the, but the thing with D&D, like, they didn't do, like, a lore story. 
They could have because yeah, there, but they, there but is they, so much. There's, but they, there's they did hints their own. like they go to the Underdark. Like, right, but they did their own thing. But they have enough pieces yes. to make their own lore. I, the Mario right. stuff just has characters. Well, it's, I see it's, what you're saying. Because yeah. it's a game. Thing, right. yeah. The D&D thing was just, you know, here's a story in a much larger world. I also liked the mayor guy. Yeah, he was good. The, the villain, the, one of the oh, villains, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Grant's yeah, character. He was great. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah, just a slimy guy. Just, just which you got to know when you're getting Hugh Grant in a movie playing a con man. He's just you know what he's going to be. Like, he's just the worst. <laughs> he's a, yeah, th- a great character. He's not going out of his way to hurt but... people. He's just going out of his way to get what he wants that inadvertently hurts people, but he doesn't care. Yeah, he's a greedy <laughs> little piece of crap. That's everything. I had Dungeon Dragon. I, I mean, there, I don't think there was that much to say about it. I mean, there no. is, but I mean, like, I don't want to spoil a lot of it because it's, no, that, it's all that, one big adventure. Yeah. Because you can actually spoil something with this. You can't spoil anything with Mario. It's just cramming shit in your face. Yeah. Um, if you had to pick one movie to go see go and you're see looking Dungeons. for a fun time, Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. definitely. For sure. Um, I only got one fact. Um, I didn't really know. it. Because everything about it was really just Easter eggs and stuff, and there's not a lot of facts for new movies. But the one thing I did have, I didn't realize there's been a trilogy already made for Dungeons and Dragons live action. Correct. In, in the early 2000s, yeah. Yeah, it was 2000, 2005, and 2012. With Jeremy Irons. And they didn't do that well. The third one went to, directly to DVD. I've I've seen the first one. Oh, boy. It, it's very, it's All very the reviews influenced are by The Phantom Menace, which is very interesting. Um, so we did we did Trivian Facts. Do a question dance. Nah. <laughs> Not good enough. I'll keep trying. So do we have anything else to say about these? Do we want to duke and nuke the movies? Oh, yeah. We, all right, we're all yeah. duking Dungeons and Dragons. All right, moving on. <laughs> and, and are we all nuking Mario? I know I am. But... Well, do we have to? I wouldn't nuke it. I'm glad I saw it. No, we don't, I, we I don't, don't think, have to. I don't think you have to, but I'm I duking, am. I'm duking both. I think I have to nuke it. Love wins. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, what a great transition to the next segment. What are we watching? do 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 dot watching um, There's always five. Uh, that's the rule. At least, I remember. Uh, mm, mm, yeah, you can't do more than five. I don't I, have five. I, I didn't cu- watch five. Things. I cut some things off because I can only do five. Good. I'm proud <laughs> of you. <laughs> um, uh, I caught up on Vinland Saga, the Viking anime on Netflix. This arc's kind of poo poo, but apparently it gets a lot better, according to other people who've read the the manner or manga or whatever it's called ahead. I am still watch. I, I'm I'm catching back up on the food that built America season three because season four came out. I'm learning all about the history of food. I learned about Wendy's this week because the guy left uh, KFC and he got pissed. Um, I watched Cocaine Bear. Uh, what did you I think? Did, I did. And I mean, it was bad, but it was fun. <laughs> but it was fun. Bad. The I, I think the best line I've heard again came from Mark Kermode, and it's Cocaine Bear is the best movie that Cocaine Bear can be. It really was because like. <laughs> They know it's dumb, but like they kind of tried and it made its money back and they're making like all the other animal drug sequels or whatever. So good for That's them, I so guess. Funny. Did you like how it said in memory of Ray Liotta and then he just gets absolutely annihilated by the bear? Yeah. <laughs> oh, golly. Yeah. I was going to say that was his last movie. Yeah. What um, a way to go out. Uh, I also watched The Nice Guys from 2016. First time? Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah, man. That I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Shane Black fan who's the director of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I have a soft spot for Iron Man three. He also did that movie. Uh, he's I like he's very good with like you know character interactions and like people talking. So I love that. Um, so it's set in the seventies and it's about two private PIs, which are Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling, and they're trying to find a missing girl. And it's like a comedy thriller. And then also I watched the uh, the new episode of The Mandalorian this week, and I wanted to talk about that specifically because Blaine 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 spoiled it. <laughs> I spoiled it. I did. <laughs> The know, only, the only, the only point and the only reason why you would ever watch this episode, actually, Mandalorian no, in general, because this is episode, for Lizzo. I, I no, I want to talk about this. This episode sucked. I didn't mind that episode. This episode, I just hated that scene. This episode also, I think, ruined the season. Really? Because this, because this season is also has already been just tanking viewership wise. That is fair. It, like. It, at the beginning, you're like, all right, they're going to get the Mandos together. Um, and then we're still trying to get them together. Blaine, what did you watch? I Shit's Creek, Mandalorian, and Lord of the Rings. Wow. Same as last week. 
Love I, it. Yeah. Wait, don't, don't change it up. No, that's what I've been doing. And next week you'll rewatch Mario. No. All right, so the first thing I watched this uh, this week was Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie. Ooh, have you heard of Tim and Eric? Yes. Okay, Tim and Eric are like I would call them an absurdist comedy duo because their editing is like super weird. But they made a movie, and basically Tim and Tim and Eric play themselves, and they were given a billion dollars to make a movie. And so the opening sequence is that movie being three minutes and flopping because they spent all the money on makeovers. But then they basically have to get the billion dollars to give back to the investors because they're all pissed about it. So they go to take over this insanely rundown mall where John C. Riley plays a very sick little kid. Um, Will Forte plays the owner of a sword store who doesn't want to sell any swords. It's just very weird. I'm not sure if I liked it. <laughs> there were points where I was like, I see what you're doing. But yeah, weird. Uh, I started rewatching the original Teen Titans show which actually kind of ties into the Mario thing because the Mario movie was directed by the same people that did um, Teen Titans Go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Teen Titans not Go is good... not the original Teen Titans. The original Teen Titans is amazing. It's got surreal lighting, a banging theme song, quality script, and it respects its audience, like the D how D&D respects its audience. And then the last thing I watched was In Bruges. <gasps> in Brudges. In Bruges. It was okay. It's In Bruges. It was okay. I, I jokingly call it In Bruges. In Bruges. It is In Bruges. Um, it's good. I liked it. I didn't love it. I thought maybe I'd love it if I was at like a different point in my life. Um, but I definitely prefer Banshees. It's by the same creative team that did the Banshees of Inna Sharon. And it's the same two actors that play the two main characters. Yeah, it's Colin Farrell and, and Brendan Gleeson are the main two. Are we all going to recommend a thing? I recommend The Nice Guys. Lord of the Rings. I'm going to say Tim and Eric because I'd be curious to see if people start emailing us about how mad they are. Oh, well, or then I confused. recommend Cocaine Bear. <laughs> All right, the news. We have the news. But mostly... I'm so sorry. I stole your thunder. No, it's okay. It's okay. The the news is coming in right now. It's being delivered by a little shy guy. <laughs> shy guy. <laughs> it's your new thing to declare like voices. <laughs> yeah. It's your new noise. That's a good shy guy noise. That was though. a good noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, first thing of news: Clint Eastwood will be doing his last movie before he retires. It's going to be called Juror Number Two. Uh, there was a trailer for the Blue Beetle movie. Yeah, that, yeah, it looked bad. Rough. It looked that bad. Look good. We love The Rock, don't we? Yeah, I don't know. Do we? Don't we love Disney live action remakes? No, <laughs> no, no. Now, Disney live action remakes take a classic movie from like forty years ago, and they, you know, they make it a new. Th they make they re. It, it's modernized. Yeah, and it becomes so good, right? Well, mm. now is it time? For the Moana live action remake. No, Moana where, isn't even 10 years what? old. What? Where The Rock will be playing Maui again. <laughs> what? It's 100% real. Uh, no. I'll show you the video. He, he did it like on the beach with his daughters. And he had like the big stick thing that he has. Yeah. And he's like, I'm back. I'm Maui. I'm The Rock. Oh my Black Adam failed. So I'm doing this now. God. All right. Who's excited for the Little Mermaid live action movie? I'm not. <laughs> I, I just don't know what you are and are not excited for. Well, you should be more okay with it. Because... Are you gonna go see it though? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I won't. I will not see. I, that. I'll go see it. I do not want to see that. Yeah, I will not see that. Stop it! Like I stop giving them your vote with your wallet. Damn it! Nah, they can have my money. <laughs> that movie's gonna be so bad. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, next thing. Game of Thrones prequel show is apparently in the works. Aegon Targaryen's Didn't Conquest of Westeros. No, this is set like... So the current prequel show is like 100 years. This is going to be like 300 years. Oh, wow. Okay, well, then in that case, well, I will end it with the little bit of Star Wars news because it's Star Wars Celebration this week. There were some new trailers for Star Wars. There was an Ahsoka trailer and a few other trailers, Blaine. You like trailers. Eat your content, Blaine. Um... Um, there are three new Star Wars movies announced. First three. movie. It's always got to be a trilogy, Blaine. No, always. these are not trilogies. These are all three separate independent movies. Yeah, we'll see. Ha -ha. The first movie you. is called Star Wars <laughs> New Jedi Order, set 15 years after the rise of Skywalker with Rey. Stop. <laughs> that's just what it is. Look, I'm not supporting it. I'm just telling you that's what it is. Next, Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi, set... 25,000 years in the past in the High Republic. Okay, I'm not against this. I'm Interesting. Inter I'm interested. And last but not least, directed by Dave Filoni, will be the Mandalorian movie that will conclude the Mandalorian storyline. Yeah, I don't care. 
Okay, I'm okay with them concluding it. Conclude it. Be done. I thought season two was the conclusion, which is why I didn't watch season three. Are they doing uh, this after the third season? I, well, or are we getting a fourth season and a fifth season and a sixth season? And then they're going to release the movie. Are, uh, are they that's pulling, a very good question. Are they pulling like, that quick one on us? I don't know. I, Blaine, they're always trying to pull quick ones. If I personally had to guess, I would say there'd be at least a season four. Okay. If I had to guess. Um, and that is all the news. What are we doing next week, Blaine? Say it. I thought we were doing the Martin Scorsese thing. Here we are. Yeah, okay. Scorsese week. <laughs> I, I had a I could not remember what we were doing. I apologize. That's okay. Oh, uh, so do you what are the three movies? Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, and Goodfellas. You can email us at dukesnukespot at gmo.com. Tell us why uh, Blaine should watch Cocaine Bear or something, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> leave us a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere else that happens to this podcast. Follow us on our YouTube channel. It's Dukes Nukes. And then we also put our videos out on Rumble because YouTube's competitor. We like we like to double dip, you know. I like to play both sides. But you don't tell people we've played both sides. Even you though just I told everybody. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Rumble, Dukes Nukes Pod, but it's one word since someone else took. There's another Dukes Nukes account on Rumble. All right. Well, thank you, Will, for editing the podcast and doing everything else. Thank you, Blaine, for having the dog. <laughs> this podcast is named after four and doing your one D&D trivia fact. And thank you, random person, for listening. Um, who will it be this week? Oh, it'll be Shy Guy. Wow. 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 Bye. That's so good. Bye. <laughs>